What is up guys, how's it going? So I just wanted to go over a few things with the Able Custom Tasks. Um, I see people saying that, you know, they can be quite confusing and you're right at first glance they can, but honestly they're pretty simple. So let me kind of uh, take you through it. Took me, it took me longer than it should have because, um, I don't know, things just don't quite connect sometimes and hopefully this will help. So these are my custom tasks and as you can see, I have quite a few of them, whatever. We'll start off with the simple stuff and um, things that I've kind of like jangly done that you'll, you'll probably start off with and then we'll move into like the more um, advanced stuff later. So this is something quick and simple that I made. It just switches my movement mode. I use it for full body BP animations and montages that like put me in the air so I can switch to fly mode and not have the animation jank, stuff like that, right? So you have to get owner, get owner and then cast it to something um alternatively you could use an interface right or whatever you want to do to like to like get this somewhere but get owner get owner is generally the best way to get to you uh, a quick way to get to your character um and then you have to go through the controller into a pawn uh it's always a controller um it doesn't matter if you set the the owner of the ability to be your character it will still return the controller so you need to then get the control pawn put that somewhere um, you know, it's it's a bit of a pain, but there's there's you can clean all this stuff up, right? There's function you can put macros and things in, um, you know, so that's fine. We'll show you how I do that later. So yeah, then I'm just setting my variables. I'm changing my movement mode. I have an input variable here, so I have my start mode and end mode. This is a uh, movement mode enum, um, and these variables that you set here, you cannot set them. So I can't do this, right? If I wanted to do this and do that it wouldn't allow me because these are these are like read only or whatever but um we'll get into how to make um variables that you can uh use later for you know saving to and then using later in the same task so um so yeah so when you come into an ability which is something like this and we look in tasks um so i have my switch movement mode so those variables are what's going to show up here. I have my start mode, end mode. So any anything here, as long as you make it variables public, um, you'll see them here, and that's how you'll interact with your tasks. So, so yeah. Um, in this case, on start, I'm obviously taking my start mode, and then I've overwritten on task end as well, and I've done something very similar again, and then I'm setting my variables again. This time, I'm using end mode and setting the full body off. Um, get anim instance here. This is garbage. Uh, I should not be casting to a specific blueprint, but I'm just testing things. This will eventually be an interface, so don't get mad. <laughs> um, right, so let's look at something a little bit more complex, and let's look at scratch pads, because scratch pads is one of the things where I was a little bit confused. I was like, right, this is a thing that exists, but what? how exactly do I use it, and how do I put things in and out of it? Because I realized it was a, it's a container for holding variables for the task but i wasn't entirely sure how to use it so let's go to something much more complex now um so into my main able task i have my custom branch so this is a completely custom branch uh task due to the fact that i'm using um input buffer uh the input buffer component thing off, off the marketplace um and i'm wanting to check that right so Okay, so this this looks like not a lot, but there there's honestly a hell of a lot happening here. So <clears throat> we'll just start at the very beginning, right? So on task start, we're going to initialize. This is just going to set variables, and straight away we're going to be jumping into this get variables. So this right here is a macro that holds my scratch pad information, and then these are actually the variables that are inside that scratch pad. So right here, what I'm doing inside get variables, I'm actually get, getting scratch pad from a context. So when you want to get your scratch pad, you need to do this. Um, there's something else important about scratch pad. So in override, you need to go to get task scratch pad class BP and you need to set it. So in this case, I have the custom branch scratch pad, which exists here. And this scratch pad does absolutely nothing but hold variables. Okay. So you make your scratch you you make your variables that you need to hold inside your ability and you put them inside a scratch pad now the little disconnect 
that my brain made at least was, well, if I have these, why do I need a scratch pad? And, well, there's some very simple answers to that. Um, if you wanted to have, like, an owner here, you, you can't, right? Because you can't target um, something that doesn't exist in the game yet. So, but these are not settable. You, these are only readable from here, correct? So, if you want to have something that you can set and read from, as well as just read from, you need to have a scratch pad. So, where do I use it and why is it helpful? Well, the main one I use it for is deciding when I want to branch at the end. Um, so, in this case, I'm getting my scratch pad. I'm setting this up, right, for the first time. I'm getting my scratch pad. And I'm just pulling out all the variables I want and I'm plugging them into a, um, an output for the macro. This will just allow me to grab them when I want them. Okay, so we're getting the variables and I'm actually setting some of these. So I'm going straight from the scratch pad because at the moment the scratch pad has no information. It doesn't know where any of these variables are um, because this is the initialization. So it's getting the scratch pad and it's going to set the scratch pad at this point because it knows what the scratch pad is. The other ones are all blank. So we're getting the scratch pad and we're going to actually uh, set the owner. So this variable now has a ver um, the get owner. Um, and then I can go to the base character, get the controller, and I can set all these variables so that I can now use them later during the macro, uh, during the task, I apologize. Um, so we're all initialized. We have our variables where we want them. Then what am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to see, is my ability on cooldown? And again, I put this in another macro just due to like visibility stuff. Um, and here I'm getting my variables again, but this time we don't need to get the scratch pad because these variables are already initialized. So in this case, we can just pull straight off and use them. Um, so, you know, my owning pawn, um, I'm getting my ability thing. I'm saying, hey, if this ignore cooldown, which is set in my task, it would be here, ignore cooldown. If that is true, uh, if this is true, then it's going to remove the cooldown of the current ability I'm playing, and it's going to then branch away. Um, if it doesn't want to ignore the cooldown, it's going to see if the cooldown is active, and then it's going to go further, correct? So, okay, that's cool. We've decided, are we on cooldown? Do we care about the cooldown? We're going to do an input check. This is, again, very similar. We're getting controller, checking the inputs, returning true or false. Um, so this is where I use a scratch pad on branch end. So I basically grab this. I grab the branch end that I've set in my task um, in here. So this would say branch end tick, for example. And then what I'm doing is I'm setting it here. And the reason I do this on the task start is because um, if I'm branching at the end, I do not need to tick in between. So I've decided, am I branching at the end? Yes, but I need to use this data in information later. Um, so we're going to save it to the scratch pad as branch at end question mark instead of just branch at end. I realize I could have named that better. I apologize if it's kind of hard to look at. Um, so if I do branch at the end is true, that's fine. If it's false, that's fine. We then decide, okay, well, if it is false, we just want to branch, right? Because I'm branching now. If everything's come back true, if my inputs are true and the ability is tr uh, cooldown is true, then I can branch. Um, if I am branching at the end, then what we're going to do is, well, if it's a if it's a long task, then the ability is going to want to tick. So on task tick, the first thing I do is I get, am I branching at the end? If I'm not branching at the end, then that's fine. You can carry on ticking. If I am branching at the end, just cut off. Don't do anything, right? Um, and then this is just a repeat of the start, effectively, um, but on tick now. So, you know, it's checking, is the cooldown, is it on cooldown, um, is the input active? I should probably do that the other way around, actually. Like, it should check for the input first and then the cooldown. I don't know, whatever. Uh, branch at the end, uh, again. This so, so, if on task start, you haven't got an input or a whatever, uh, it doesn't set the branch at end, right? So I'm just doing it here. So if I'm halfway through the task and I press that input and it becomes true, but I have branch end active, that tick will then stop from the halfway mark and it will wait till I get to on task end, which is again, it's just going to say, hey, am I branching at the end? If I am, cool, go for it. If I'm not, then just ignore it, right? It's not going to try and perform the ability. So 
few things you can think about when it comes to functions over here. Um, hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can kind of work with them. But let's give you kind of like a, just an overview of some of the other things you can do. So um, overriding is single frame BP. Um, in this case, I have another variable, single check. Sometimes I might only want a single check. That's fine. I can turn that off. In this case, if I have, uh, if I do um, logic, IP branch. So if I do single check, it, it does this for me. And it's because it's setting it inside here. So this this by itself will, you know, uh, do all of this for you, which is quite nice. It allows you to, you know, it's really cool that we can just do that so easily. Um, task category, we can set this. So I have logic here. This is what is going to um, categorize these. So this puts it in here. I could name it anything I want. Uh, tits out some buggery and it would, you know, come up here and I could drop down and yeah, you know, good stuff. Um, yeah, getting, getting the task name, this will allow you to change it here. So um, IP branch, and then I get like, um, oh, in this case, I'm getting the display name of the command. So if I put a command in here, um, back right dash, there you go, it will update the name. You know, there's a lot of things you can do with tasks. Um, I suggest just experimenting. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can use scratch pads and uh, move data around inside them slightly more effectively. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I really hope that helps. Um, if there's anything I said wrong, Matt, or got incredibly incorrect, just let me know. I'm sorry. <laughs> See ya.